so I've actually got an eye beacon attached to my cat. Ruby is alive, Ruby's not going in. Oh, I want to dream for developer happiness. The goal here today is basically to clear up a few of the misconceptions that are kind of prevalent about threads and processes. Um, a lot of us are working with them uh, in, our, in our code, whether explicitly or implicitly, um, and you know we should understand them. So the first thing to speak about is concurrency and parallelism. Um, so concurrency is any situation where you have a number of discrete tasks that you're trying to accomplish, uh, and they're happening over the course of the same period of time. It's not, it's not serial, which would be one and then the other, but instead you have multiple things that are happening all along at the same time. Uh, parallelism, parallelism, hard to say, is a, uh, a particular case of concurrency where you have uh, those, those tasks are actually being accomplished at the same moment. So as an example, on the right you have someone working at a treadmill desk. Uh, so if that person has been uh, doing his thing for the last hour, he has spent an hour walking and an hour getting work done. Uh, so both of those tasks are happening at the exact same moment. Uh, they're, they're being fully, uh, fully parallelly uh, accomplished. Uh, on the left you have uh, a an example of concurrency without parallelism. Uh, so those are browser tabs, right? Something we're all very, very familiar with uh, from our everyday lives. So you know, you're following up with, with uh, you know, following your emails. You're looking at Twitter, uh, checking out the, the any last-minute changes to the Rails Israel schedule, um, and all the all those tasks are happening over the course of the same period of time, uh, but they're not happening at the exact same moment. You only have one active tab in the browser uh, at any given time. So put that on hold. Let's jump back to threads and processes. So here's what they have in common. Uh, both of them provide concurrent, not necessarily parallel, uh, but always concurrent execution of code. Uh, neither guarantee execution order. So essentially, you can think of like, you know, usually the way that your code works, you have kind of like a little hand running through your code, executing as it goes, uh, you know, working its magic. And with uh, a thread or multiple threads or multiple processes, you have more than one hand running through your code uh, doing their thing. And it could be that one hand is going to, you know, run through a lot faster than the other hand. Um, and both add overhead to your code, so they are not free. Uh, what the cost is will vary, uh, but neither of them are free. Now let's talk about the distinction. So the, the main point is that multiple threads will share the same chunk of memory, uh, whereas processes each have their own independent slice of memory. Um, so just to give uh, a little example, uh, so let's say you have, uh, on the left you have two threads which share a reference to a variable. Uh, when one of the threads changes uh, that variable, the other thread will, will have access to the change. Uh, by contrast, if you have two processes, that's what you have on the right, uh, when one of those uh, processes changes that variable, the other one will be unaffected. So the nice thing is that threads can communicate with each other very easily because they're, they're sharing that memory. Uh, the downside is that pro uh, threads can, al can always step on each other's toes, uh, make problems for each other, which is why we talk about thread safety. No one talks about process safety because processes don't kill each other. Um, warning, that is a majorly gross oversimplification, uh, but I only have five minutes. So basically, threads share memory and state. Processes don't share. They're just, they're just working uh, independently. Now, let's speak about the specific case of threads and, and processes in MRI, in the default implementation of Ruby. So processes operate the way you probably expect. You, know, you fork a process, and then you know, they're just moving in parallel. But threads are concurrent but not parallel because of the global interpreter lock, the GIL which basically means, uh, it just built into the implementation of Ruby, that if one thread is moving, the other one is stopped. And, and when, when that thread stops, the other one can start moving. And then they're you know, going back and forth, uh, sharing, sharing time effectively. Uh, but, but never, never uh, shall both of them uh, work at the same time. So as Rubyists, uh, a lot of people tend to kind of conflate these concepts, processes, threads, parallelism, concurrency, but it's not actually true. So processes are theoretically parallel if you have the cores to support it. But on a single core system, uh, you can have as many processes as you want, only one will be happening at any given time because you need the hardware to support that software concept. Uh, in terms of threads, so usually they're, uh, they're concurrent if you're doing just running Ruby code in an MRI. Um, but if you're running JRuby or Rubinius, uh, those implementations support actual uh, parallel execution of threads. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I.O., non-blocking I.O., it's not just for Node.js. Um, non-blocking I.O. basically means that if you're doing a file operation, calling to a database, calling to an HTTP service, uh, as long as that's happening, that thread basically goes to sleep, another one can keep going. Uh, and whenever that, that uh, thread that's sleeping gets its information back, it'll keep going uh, and executing. So there's a case where you have actual parallelism because that thread is doing its thing, uh, which is effectively sleeping, and the other thread is moving along. Uh, so uh, one implication of this 
is scikit concurrency. So a lot of people kind of mess this up. Uh, if you have a server that's running uh, only scikit, no other processes to worry about, and it's using MRI, so one scikit process per core. If you have a machine that's running eight, that, that has eight cores, and you're running only one scikit process, scikit process with a lot of concurrency, you're basically wasting seven cores. So that's a big mistake, don't do that. One process per core, because each, each process could only be handled by one core. Eight processes, you have eight cores that are busy. Um, and then the, the rule for concurrency to set how many threads are working in each uh, scikit process should be one over CPU time. So for example, if a quarter of your background job is CPU and three quarters are IO, uh, which is actually a pretty high level of IO, um, so you should, your scikit concurrency should be four. People set this way too high, keep it low, think about that ratio, figure out how to, how to find out the IO CPO uh, relationship, and then flip it and that's your, your concurrency. So that's what I got, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me on Twitter. Um, and one more thing, if I, can, if I can throw in, I'm probably over time by now, um, especially with the issues at the beginning, but it was hilarious and I have to, I have to mention. So I spoke with Sergio earlier this morning um, about, uh, about his presentation. So he, so he spoke about threads executing in parallel and I, you know, I figured like, I got him, right? Threads are concurrent, right? So I go over to him, I'm like, you know, hey, what about you know, the, uh, the thread concurrent thing? And he was like, well, we're using JRuby and it's mostly IO, so you know, there's two reasons why it's not a problem. But it would've been really funny if I could make fun of him for it because his last name is Gil. Uh, so there you go.